Hi everybody, my name is Justine and I'm the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Manager and I'm here with Norman Nur, the Mental Health, uh, Wellbeing Advisor and David Taylor, Wellbeing Practitioner. Um, we wanted to talk to you today about Dry January. Obviously many of us get to the start of the new year um, and perhaps want to look at things that we can do differently um, and often uh, we look at things like our alcohol consumption um, and I'm aware that um, many of us, and I would say including myself here, have perhaps increased their alcohol consumption during lockdown. Hence why things like Dry January exist. Um, so if I can start with you, Norman, um, can you perhaps share some statistics around alcohol consumption that people may be interested in? Mm -hmm. Well, just one of the baselines is according to the chief medical officer is a recommended a units of consumption that is not to exceed our 14 units per week for men and women. So we want to get that less of ideally. Uh, but some of the startling things I've came across on the uh, UK NHS website were in the year 2018, and there's always a year time lag. So for 2018, there were 5,600 alcohol specific deaths. In terms of uh, admissions, there was estimated to be around 358,000 admissions to hospital that were alcohol related. So they're quite significant things, mm -hmm. you know, to consider. And I think if we look at our own personal lives, you know, in terms of like when we look at stuff around domestic violence or violence in our communities, mm -hmm. alcohol related violence is quite significant. So if there's a good reason, that's a good reason. But there's obviously some positive uh, reasons as well. So according to uh, the Alcohol Concert Survey in terms of why people use Dry January, 80% um, of participants said they feel more energised, you know, feel better for having a period of abstention mm -hmm. from alcohol. 70% uh, of participants uh, rated having better sleep and 66% again just feeling a lot better in themselves. So good reasons to perhaps take a break from alcohol, I would say and see what a positive impact it could potentially have. Yeah. Thank you, Norman. David, do you have any tips for people in terms of approaching a dry January? Or, of course, it might stretch now into February because uh, we're in the middle of the month, but any sort of tips yeah. you can give people? Yeah, I mean, um, I've got five tips, you know, and um, they're quite effective, but I could see how um, there needs to be a lot of thought put into it and a lot of planning. So the first one is, you know, if you've got booze lying around the house, you know, get rid of it, you know, um, tip it out, give it away, give it to friends. But if you find that bit difficult, you know, there's always things like um, in the cupboards, in the attic, you know, with the spiders. So you don't, you're not <laughs> tempted to go up there. Um, so that's the first one is to get rid of it. You know, the second one is to make a plan, you know, January is a pretty boring month anyway. Um, and in the current climate, it's like, um, it's twice as boring, isn't it, I guess, now for people. So it's easy to sort of, um, to sit back and, and have a drink maybe in January because there's not much else to do. Pubs are closed. Um, but if you're in a situation um, where you're sort of in that social circle or you find yourself wanting a drink or inclined to have a drink, you know, make the decision in advance. You know, um, decide whether you're going to uh, drink alcohol free, try alcohol free alternatives or um, or even fizzy drinks. You know, it's um, it's important to practice saying no, because we know how difficult it is to say no when it comes to sort of social uh, social events. And and you'll thank yourself the next day, <laughs> you know, um, so make saving. That's, so that's the second one. So the third one is make saving, saving money a part of. Um, a part of that plan you know you'd be surprised just how much money that you'll save it, it, when you when you don't drink when you don't buy a drink or you don't you don't socialize in that in that aspect um so use the money to treat yourself you know treat yourself and you know each time you you sort of crave a drink treat yourself with something you know if it's chocolate if it's chocolate it's your thing then chocolate if it's that film you've watched a hundred times i will watch it again <laughs> you know um but try and break the association between alcohol and treats you know um because people often do that with their cigarettes yeah, the money they save right. from not having the cigarettes uh -huh. the 
they'll yeah. reward yeah. themselves and it's a good incentive yeah so the third one uh, sorry my fourth one is have a support group you know um this is a bit of a it's a bit of a task on your own um yeah so you know get together keep each other motivated it's important to have a support network you know people who won't mm -hmm. ply you a drink or tempt mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. you know you don't have to be you don't have to spend every day with these people you know as long as they're in your sort of fold um to give each other support you know that's and, right dave i've heard some of yeah. our students actually mention that they're like you know instead of going to the pub they'll do some activities like when the city space was open they might do football or they might do netball yeah. or they might do the walks and that so it's yeah. like finding your support group i guess and you know making sure that you can do things as enjoyable as perhaps socializing around drink which is enjoyable but perhaps yeah. finding alternative enjoyable things to do as well yeah yeah so my last tip is fill in the gap you know so it's winter we've got shorter days and uh, it's going to be shorter if you're hung over so uh, now that you're sober um you'll always have more time for the things that you enjoy you know so if it was guitar lessons when you know when uh, things get kind of back to normal then get yourself some guitar lessons or use some of that money that you've saved up you know um and these are just they're just five tips to help you go with, with an alcohol free january or even beyond uh january um and there's lots more information on the app try dry um, and like I say, this doesn't have to be just for January. This can go beyond January. Mm -hmm. no? Brilliant. I'll make sure that that um, app is included in the information for the video yeah. as well. So um, I think the most important thing to remember from uh, my perspective is uh, for dry January to so try and enjoy it. I actually did dry October. Um, and I did actually enjoy being off the, the, the booze for a month. I mean, it's not meant to be about deprivation. It's a, it's just a chance for a break. I saw it as um, um, a target to achieve. You know, could I go a whole month without mm. uh, without drink? So I, I, I tried to drive myself in that way um, and to see what it was like. I mean, I don't uh, drink regularly, but when I do drink, I drink a lot. So it was quite interesting to see if I would yeah. enjoy my weekend as much without doing it. And of uh -huh. course I did. But yeah. it wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the key thing in, is that, of course, your service, the wellbeing service um, and the website has lots of information about supporting people around alcohol substances mm -hmm. and any yeah. other support issue that you might want to address. And I'll make sure, again, that the links to the wellbeing service are in, are in there. Yeah. So is there anything else that either of you would like to say to sort of close with regards to uh, alcohol and dry January? No, I think you've said it, Justine, in terms of just like check our website because we've got a lot of online app stuff now as well. Together All, you know, Silver Cloud, Fika, all those apps can also complement the support yeah. that you might want to do on your own as well. Yeah, yeah. And if, you know, if you found yourself over the last sort of 10 months, a lot of people have been spending a lot of time on their own, you know, and if you found yourself sort of having a little bit more alcohol than you probably would have you know um had generally and and you think there may be a little bit of an issue there reach out talk to someone mm -hmm. you know yeah. come and talk to us talk to your gp um and you know uh do something about that as soon as you know brilliant thank you both very much thank you thanks justine